On Australia's surfing beaches, every summer's day is like the day before or the day that will follow. The people change and the conditions vary, but the pattern remains the same. While the dawn gulls circle and fish for their morning meal, the first of the surfers arrive to ride the waves and enjoy the tranquility of the first few early hours. The handful of attendants who maintain the beach or cater for its visitors prepare in the quiet time for the bustling day ahead. are still almost deserted, the beach inspectors, trained professional lifesavers, check their gear and allocate safe surfing areas. The beaches belong to the people and their local government councils tend and administer them as a matter of community pride. Surf lifesaving clubs are established on all surf beaches in constant use by the public. The young clubmen volunteer for service and patrol the beaches during the busy weekends. Most mornings they too are in the surf before the gals have gone, training new members or practicing new techniques. Surf lifesaving had its origin in Sydney and most of the present day equipment and techniques were developed on metropolitan beaches. Today there are some 230 clubs in Australia alone and the voluntary surf lifesaving movement is well established throughout the world. As the day progresses, the beaches fill to capacity. The city of Sydney has 25 major beaches along its coastline, and during a summer weekend, hundreds of thousands of people throng to them from the inland suburbs. Visiting the beach, an inexpensive pastime, has become a family custom, a national tradition. Australia enjoys its summer while the northern hemisphere is cloaked in winter. November, December and January are the busiest months on the beach. During the midsummer season, the population of some beach suburbs doubles with the influx of visitors and holiday makers.
youngsters make up the largest single group on any Sydney beach. For those who cannot yet afford a standard surfboard, the rubber surfer plane provides a tricky substitute. In many ways, the bouncing, air-filled float is harder to ride than the regular streamlined board. has become a major surf sport in Australia. It is strictly controlled. Boards are registered and may be ridden only in special areas marked out by the beach inspectors. Lightweight and manoeuvrable, the fiberglass Malibu board is today part of the scene on every surfing beach. Body surfers and board riders usually keep out of each other's territory. A skilled surfer makes body riding look simple, even on the biggest waves. But there are usually years of practice behind this easy mastery. The ways of the sea and the surf are well known to the enthusiasts, who use channels and cross currents to get out to the big deep water waves. The same conditions for a weak swimmer can often spell danger. Routine rescues are carried out on Sydney beaches almost daily, sometimes dozens on a single beach on a single day. Surfers accept these rescues as commonplace, and the watchful eyes of the lifesavers give a sense of security to enhance the day's enjoyment. With some beaches more than a mile in length, there are often two, sometimes three, surf life-saving clubs sharing the responsibility.
competition between clubs is encouraged to keep up training and rescue standards. And competitive surf carnivals are held at one of Sydney's beaches almost every weekend. Teams from as many as a hundred clubs may compete at a major city carnival. Tournament events include all aspects of surfing and lifesaving. But the march past, the traditional carnival highlight, has come to be identified as the symbol of Australian surf lifesavers. feature group and club work, but team spirit is the essence of the voluntary surf life-saving movement. Lifesavers do not come by their title easily. They are trained with army-like discipline and must be efficient in the use of all the equipment and rescue methods used by their clubs. They are figures of affection on every Australian beach, for the public is aware of the amount of time they devote freely and voluntarily to the safety and service of others. Whether it's been a day of carnival and competition or a routine family day at the beach, every day throughout the long months of the summer will end the way that it began. The beaches will empty before sunset, as quickly as they filled after dawn. Soon the gulls will return to search for their evening meal, competing with the few rod fishermen who have waited patiently for the end of the day. Tomorrow, it will all happen again. The people may be different and the conditions changed, but the pattern remains the same. The people own the beaches, and the people tend and guard and enjoy them. Every day for almost eight months of the year, they will gather in their tens of thousands to surf and sun in the natural playgrounds that have been preserved for them. The beaches are freely available to all Australians as part of their national heritage.